welcome to Face the Facts. It's great to have you all here once again. I am Nick Face. Um, it's a snowy day in April. Not an April Fool's snowstorm, but kind of uh, it's nasty out. So we're uh, bundled up here inside and we're going to talk about a lot of good things going on in Boston sports right now. It's kind of hard to choose which team you want to talk about first. You have your Bruins, the Red Sox, and the Celtics all have done extraordinary well in the past week or so. Um, and then we have some new additions to the Bruins that absolutely should be talked about. That's why for today, I'm going to say that we need to talk about the Bruins first because they have three new additions to the team that came on Tuesday from the trade deadline that was this past Monday. And a player that's always been high up on my list because I think he's fit this system tremendously, always wanted him here. That's Taylor Hall. Taylor Hall gets start, uh, gets anchored now into that second line. And since he's been on uh, the Krejci line, you know, it, you've had nothing short of a, uh, a different, a different making line. You've had better play. You've had more setups with goals. Krejci scored, Taylor Hall scored. They look great. And, and you can't discount Craig Smith. I mean, he's probably one of the hottest Bruins players right now. So that second line has been tremendous. And I'm looking, I'm looking for that line to take a lot of that burden off that first line where I think there's a lot of pressure for them to deliver. You have a tremendous defenseman that just came from Ottawa by the name of Matt Riley, and I'm ecstatic about the move. I love his play that he's added since Tuesday. Um, he has been a big difference for a Bruins defensive core that has surely been lacking. Um, in the past week or so. Um, so he steps right in. I mean, he's had a tremendous, uh, uh, he's been a tremendous uh, part of each of these last uh, couple wins that the Bruins have gotten. Um, and please do not discount probably the best fourth line that the hockey might have right now. You have uh, Sean Corrali, Chris Wagner, and now you have, um, is his first name Chris, Chris Lazone? Is that his first name? It's Lazone, L-A-Z-O-N. Yeah, it's, um, uh, no, his first name, oh, my God. Matt? Yeah. Not Jeremy, so. we have a Lazone. Uh, Lazone, oh. Boston Bruins. Let's just do a Google search. Yeah, Jeremy there. Lazone is the defenseman. Yeah, Jeremy Lazone. We have a Laz, uh, Lazone. Lazone. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it's Chris. I was right. I was right. I should never second guess myself. It was Chris. Um, I've loved, I love his energy. I love his hustle. I love his tenacity on the ice. This could put the Bruins over the top. You know, I, I know it's two games, but I like what I see so far. It's a kick in the butt. It's a spark. It's additions that were needed. And I got to credit Don Sweeney. I don't usually do that here. I think he's a boob still, but I think that from what you saw from this past trade deadline, the Bruins are really loading up. They want a deep run in the playoffs, and hopefully we get a Stanley Cup out of it. Another positive note, Tuka Rask returned uh, last night against the New York Islanders, and he looked flawless, uh, looked great. The Bruins are playing the Islanders again on a back-to-back. -back. Um, Rask is not in, in net for tonight. However, um, everything's good on that front. They just don't want to rush him back too quick. The Bruins are going nowhere without Tuka Rask, and I just want that point to be emphasized. I can't emphasize it enough. You're not going anywhere with Halak, Swyman, and Vladar, or Vladair, whatever the heck his name is, in that. You're not going anywhere. If you want to win a Stanley Cup, get over it, folks. Tuka Rask is your goaltender. So he needs to get over the hump, put his big boy pants on, and get the job done. I don't want to hear it anymore from people with, oh, I don't like Rask. Well, if you don't like Rask, then you don't like Stanley Cup because it's the only way it's going to happen. There's no way uh, Swayman is going to get a Stanley Cup for this Bruins team. I'm sorry. Great kid. Want to see more of them. But the buck stops at Tuka Rask. So you got to get the job done on that front. Um, Tom, you are our kind of our hockey uh, expert in a way. I know you don't watch the Bruins. I don't know why enough, but. I guess you have issues with TVs and stuff like that. But are you happy with the move? Um, 
I mean, after last night's game, yeah, absolutely. Um, I liked I I liked the uh, the move of getting Riley from Ottawa. That was a good pickup. Uh, they definitely needed something on defense. Um, and I mean, you got you got Taylor Hall for practically nothing. So really, I mean, nothing. Can't. But uh, again, you got Lazon too. I mean, I got yeah. Oh yeah, Curtis Laser. Curtis, they. I knew it was a C. It's not Chris. It's Curtis. He has. I'll gladly sit Stanika or Frederick and put this guy in. If you're going to okay. get that kind of production, all these young kids who we wanted to give a chance, see ya, they haven't shown anything. They no, really haven't. And, and I, um, yeah, I, I, um, liked Lazar, the, the move for Lazar and, uh, Riley. I was obviously questionable about Taylor Hall. Um, you know, with all his issues going on, his injuries and everything, but it's a risk I mean, worth taking, correct? Especially, I would say part. so, especially since he waived his no trade clause to come here. He wants to be here. That's a big uh, difference. I didn't want to play for Buffalo. He didn't but, want to play for New Jersey. He didn't want that. He wanted to be with the Bruins, and he has come out and said that he wanted to specifically be with the Bruins this past off season. Just didn't work out. Now the Bruins get him on a lot cheaper of a deal, and. Hopefully this can be, you know, the best is yet to come on this move. The other thing that I want to say now is with Hall and Curtis Lazon now added to this team, you got a lot more depth and it's going to make the power play a lot more effective. You saw Taylor Hall get inserted into that power play a couple of times uh, last, last night and they were successful. Um, they were successful on two of them. Uh, it was a de definitely a different kind of team. You put Pasta back with Bergeron and Marchand, which is great. Your second line now has your Taylor Hall, your uh, David Krejci, and your Craig Smith. Your third line has Charlie Coyle, uh, Jake DeBrusque, and I think it was Carson Coleman and Nick Ritchie. They'll be going back and forth. I believe they're going with Nick Ritchie. I think it's better to put him on the third line. Then you have your Wagner, your Corrali, and your uh, Lazon. That's going to mean that all these kids who pretty much struck out and failed, oh, well, you got your chance. You didn't do anything. So I'm excited to see what the Bruins do. This is a big test for them on a back-to-back -back with the Islanders. The Islanders have been the thorn in their side for quite a bit of time. If they want any sort of run in the Stanley Cup, you need another win here tonight. I don't want to hear the excuse of a back-to-back. -back. We gave our all. In this. I don't want to hear it. You win tonight. That's a statement game if you get that tonight. So I well, it was a, it was a miracle kind of night last night. Buffalo ended up beating Washington too. So not up time. That's what it is for them. Not up. They will have an off day on Saturday, and then we'll play the Capitals again on Sunday. Tough, tough schedule right now. But I don't want to hear it. There's no excuse. Get out there, play. Put your big boy pants on. You no, want? They're, they're playing good now. There. They're playing they're good. Playing good now, watch, so. They're in sync, and they've gotten points in their last six of eight. I want to see that continue. The hottest team in Boston, though, it's not the Bruins. I'd love to say it's the Celtics, but can't they can't they can't do anything with the five gamer? You had a nine yeah. with the Boston Red Sox. Oh, that's true. What a breath of fresh air this team is. My what, goodness. Well, you called it, Nick. You called it. We were all down. We were down in that first couple week on that first three games. I didn't look too far into it, though. You know, I knew it was Baltimore, and I knew it was kind of – you got to get your kind of your bearings straight a little bit, but sneaky good. I don't think we – I think we can eliminate the sneaky now. This team is good. The Red Sox are good, and it's exciting. We have baseball back now in Boston, which is very good. Um, yes, they lost yesterday, you know. However, they were down 3-0 in the eighth inning, and they had the bases loaded a left-handed pitcher going for the, uh, for the twins. Uh, needless to say, I wish that we had clobbered the heck out of Michael Pineda. Excuse me. There's a new name for Michael Pineda, Michael Pine Ada, because he's the one with the pine tar that he had from the Yankees back in the day. I don't know if you guys remember that. I do. I didn't even know he was still pitching. Thing. Yeah. He's pitching. Like he's like twins. in his fifties. He looks like Pablo Sandoval on the mound. Does he? Oh, yeah. It looks like he swallowed him. 
Big Panda. Oh, that's a big. He's got oh, he's a your job. Boy. He's a big boy. Um, they couldn't hit him. Finally, the bullpen comes in for the Twins, and uh, Alex Verdugo got the big hit yesterday. A three-run bases clearing double to tie the game, uh, three-three. They didn't get the job done. Um, probably one of the players that I'm a little disappointed in the bullpen right now is Adam Montavino. He looks very hittable. He's not fooling anybody up there. I think he can make the adjustment, though. I don't have that much criticism for this team. How can you criticize? You can't. They got nine games in a row from a streak. They shut all of us fans up that thought that they weren't going to be good. They have proven themselves. They are the best team in baseball in the American League right now. The Dodgers are also very good um, in the National League, but the Red Sox are proving all the doubters right now. I highly doubt they play tonight because of this snow rain crap, but you got a big series coming up against the Chicago White Sox and a player that just got a no hitter for them. They will face on Monday morning. Yes. Monday morning. Cause of Patriots day. Usually when the marathon goes on, no marathon, they're going to keep that 11 o'clock game going and everything. So, um, the pitcher that threw the no hitter, Carlos Rendon, um, that happened for the White Sox on what, last night. It was Wednesday night. We have two no hitters so far in baseball so far. I don't know if you guys knew that. There are two no hitters. So we have uh, Carlos Rendon. And then for the Padres, why can't I think of this guy's name? He was homegrown. Padres no hitter guy. Do you guys know about who's, what his name was? No, no, no. Okay, let me go. Well, that's a, but that's still pretty crazy. Oh, Already, is this the like, new guy? It starts with an L, right? Uh, Joe Musgrove. Joe Musgrove. Oh, an Musgrove. L. And that was um, Don Rosillo's fourth no hitter call on uh, for a broadcast. He's called wow. today. Nomos. He is called John Lester's. He oh, that's right. Oh, Dan Nomo. He is called Joe Musgrove. So I remember. Do you remember that? that? He uh, did not call Dan Nomo Derek Lowe's no hitter. Derek no. Lowe had a game in 2002. That was another announcer that. But that was a uh, yeah, that was a but that was a national game, I think, right? That, that was, was playing like Fox. That happened there. So Orsillo's like, got four no hitters on his wow. call. The other crazy thing about Don Orsillo, how many of you knew this? That the very first call of Don Orsillo's MLB career in 2001 was a no hitter. It was that the the Nomo one. That was the Nomo. Do one. Do you remember that game at all? It was against the Orioles too. Yes, it was. I remember I that. that I remember that game. Yeah. I yeah. remember being because it was like it. It was a seven o'clock, but it felt much earlier because it was like the yep. first week in the season or second week. Yep, it was. A, that was two thousand one. Yeah, it was very. It was, it was the first game of the season. Oh, was it the first? The first game of the season. Yeah. Wow. Yep. And he had a he had an okay career with us. He had a, had a very good career. He's one of the better Japanese pitches that baseball has ever had. Yeah. Oh, his career was good, but just with us, I yeah. think you know. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, good career. So that's what's going on in baseball. Um, I am very pleased with what I've seen so far with obviously J.D. Martinez and Christian Vasquez. They look elite. They look hungry. They look motivated. Our pitching staff has been, I would say, pretty decent starting pitching. They don't have, you know, the flashy bells and whistles. They don't have that, you know, superstar kind of pitcher that's out there, but they got, they got guys that can get the job done. So, there's a big series coming up against the White Sox. White Sox are supposed to be one of the better teams in baseball. And I'm looking forward to seeing more on what this team's going to put together. Um, anything on the Red Sox you guys want to add? Uh, no, I I think it's great. Uh, yeah, some people in the stands, I think it's great that the Sox are being talked about again in a positive light. Yep. And I think Alex Cora probably has a lot to do with it. I, I think... He was a big, knows big to, advocate for him coming back. Yeah, I think we all talked about it. We also all talked about it, uh, you know, when the season began and they were going through. We're like, it's not the end of the world because you have 162 games. Uh, it's not the, you know, you got a while to go. So, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to more of this, and I'm looking forward to a summer baseball. As you, you had Same said. here. I haven't had it since 2018. Because 2019, it was a joke because they started out like 0-4. 20 or something like that. I don't know. I'm exaggerating, but it wasn't a good start. This silences a lot of things, takes pressure off. Now you know what your team's like. Now you got something to build towards. You already have that success. You should be able to be more successful as the season goes on. Speaking of building, 
speaking of shutting people up, speaking of making a difference, speaking of playing with energy, tenacity, that's the Celtics. Five games in a row. Wow. The heck got in their uh, basketballs. Well, I mean, technically it would be, uh, it's even more if they won that uh, Philly game. Yeah. Uh, Cause it, before that Philly game, I think they won like three or four in a row or something. But uh, I even, I also don't even think they played their best game against Philly either. And they didn't have Fournier, uh, which He's who was still out. He's got some, I He's, think he has COVID. I don't know. Either had it. I mean, the, the protocol, either Cover he had it or, or he was exposed to it either way yeah. um, that they're keeping protocol. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, it is, um, it's kind of great to see this. And I think, Listen, for everyone watching, and all, I, I'm not, I don't consider myself a Bobo. I don't. I, I'm a fan, and I like to see them do well, and I think I'm realistic about their expectations. I don't think you're winning a championship, but I do think you have a realistic shot. If you play to your potential, you have a realistic shot of going to the Eastern Conference Finals. You do. But I don't think that's if – oh, go ahead, Nick. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, I was going to say, say um, I think the Fournier trade, the Fournier trade was the big reason why this team has done so, so much better. And he's not yeah. even really out there, but I just think that, that that change of culture on that team, the change in the locker room. I'm not saying Daniel Tice was an issue. I'm not saying those people. No, I, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. But also it means, like, I think Daniel Tice is a great player. Well, he's a very, he's a great role player. And I love him. I loved him when he was here. And, you know, I wish we could have kept him. But you know what? <laughs> Did you? Have, oh, yeah. Did you really? No, no. All right. I, you took me for it right there. It was like a bullet, a Daniel Tice bullet. But I uh, – no, but Robert Williams, uh, he really is coming to his own. He didn't even play last night either. So Tristan Thompson is kind of back. And I like – I love Thompson off the bench more than I like him as a starter. So it's good. Will, having Robert Williams as your starting center I think is great because he's actually an incredible passer. And he has a bit of a jump shot he doesn't use a lot, but he can. And they even – they talk about him being a, a power forward. Yep. which he's like 6'11". So, I mean, like, yeah, he could, he could definitely do that. And they want to bring in possibly another bigger guy because, you know, you need someone to go after Embiid because he, you know, Embiid's a beast. So did you guys um, hear that Isaiah Thomas asked for his release of the New York, New Orleans Hornets? Uh, no, I didn't. So, oh, is it New Orleans? It's, it's the Pelicans. Uh, the Pelicans. Yeah, the Pelicans. Pelicans. That's yeah, yeah. Um, so he's out there. Would you do it? Yeah, why not? Uh, uh, great. You and who do you drop? You drop one of the uh, you bring on waters, get the hell off my team. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, like get him back to the G League and just bring someone. I'm gonna fall off his chair after that. That No, he's get that bum off that team. No, he's a big TW fan, as we've talked before. I I can totally see, I probably his cousin. No, Uh, but actually, last night, I don't know if any of you watched any of the Lakers game, but they actually. No, they they could use Isaiah as a backup. I would have escorted Tremont out of here. If I was well, in, I mean, that was last a terrible night, performance. Did you see? Well, you saw. Did you hear what happened? Like they were up by like almost twenty seven. I almost blew it. Yeah. And they only yeah they had to bring the starters back in like with like two minutes yep. left. Yep. Um. um now Jalen Brown, I mean, he had a historic game. He had 40, 40 points. Yeah. Yep. It was what that was a um, bunch of rebounds, points, all that. Oh, kind he of was. Thing. And he was percentage. he was the money man last night. He was he the was. money man. But I do want to say one thing. I don't know if we should be tooting our own horn here because there's no LeBron there and there's no Anthony no. Davis. Well, so, no, no, you're right, you're right. But uh, I, I don't know how much you want to look into that victory. Those two players obviously not being there. That's a big reason why. The no, Lakers no, I, and so, you know what they and I will say this. I think the Lakers are a deep team. But I also think, like, you know, without those players, they're not nearly what they yeah, are. Of course not. Of but, course not. but, I mean, with that being said, the Celtics manhandled them. And they manhandled them in a way that, like, yeah, if LeBron and Anthony Davis are there. Would have been a game. Yeah, I think it's a game. I think it's a yes. game. I'm not saying you're going to win that game. But also, yeah. I think it, it speaks volumes that they had to bring the starters back in. Because, you know, the seas aren't that – they're not as deep as they, they want to be no, or not. they could be. No, they're not. Uh, but uh, but the games against uh, Portland and against Denver on this road trip are significant and good wins. Yep. So uh, those against quality teams on the road, uh, be it, you know, they have some people in the stands, like maybe 2,000, maybe more. Uh, you don't have the full breadth of being on the road, but it's still, uh, still a good win. But, yeah. The next game for the Celtics will be against Golden State. That's Saturday night. 
uh, that is, is that in Golden State? I, or no, I think it's, Boston? I think it's, I think it's in Boston. I, I think it is too. So I see Golden State at Celtics. That's an 830 start. Yeah. And then they will. And Seth play Curry is playing on lights out. Oh, cool. Yes, he has been. Yes, he yes. has. Been. And you probably would like this. Damian, Lill, uh, Damian Lillard, I believe said this of, from Portland Trailblazers, who they played the other night. He said this, and I agree with him, but also, what are you going to do? He said the Brooklyn Nets are buying a championship. And I don't think he's wrong, but I also think Probably like, he's wrong either. but also teams, I mean, that's what the MB, that's what teams will do that's or what, if they that's can. What New York teams do. Sure. But it doesn't mean I mean, they're successful. We can even say that happened with the Red Sox on a couple of things. Definitely yeah, not of course. four. Maybe but 07, a, you know, we kind yeah. of bought it because we had such a good team. 13, no way. Cause we got, we hmm. got a bunch of bargain at the, we got a bunch of Filene's basement sh- uh, shopping players on that team. Um, 2018, you might be able to say that. You know, you went out and you got like David Price and some of those uh, other big names, JD Martinez. Um, but I would definitely say if anybody's buying things, it's still New York. It's that kind of uh, buying a championship sort of thing. Um, speaking of the New York thing, I don't want to mean I don't mean to jump back to baseball, but I get a great thrill when I see the Yankees not do well. I get a great thrill of it, and they have absolutely catastrophically been a disaster to start this season. And I love every minute of it. You have Gary Sanchez who doesn't know run, how to run a base. You have Aaron Judge who when he swings a bat goes on the disabled list. You got Stanton who couldn't even hit the broad side of a barn when he's up at the plate. Um, I love it. You know, their starting pitching is an absolute mess. Uh, it's, it's, I just hope that continues because it's also- just terrible. Don't forget it was Jackie Robinson Day yesterday, too. Yes, it was. So they had this special unit. Oh, thank you, Tom. That might continue throughout the rest of the weekend, I think, too. Probably. As it should. So it's nice to see the players honor Jackie Robinson with the 42 um, numbers that they wear in their special uniforms. So that's pretty much the scoop of what's going on in sports. I don't – again, I don't have really anything to – we have nothing to complain about. No, I mean, I – Nothing. I'm looking forward to where the seeds go from here. Positivity. The, we have positivity the, the in here, here today. Yeah, nothing from the Pats, uh, but we'll see what happens. Nope, when's nope, the, nothing the with draft that. Is... Happy 69th birthday to BB. Oh, there you go. Yep, as actually, I think it was yesterday or today or something like that. And, and the uh, draft today, is in two today, weeks. It was 21 years ago on this day where Tom Brady was drafted by the New England Patriots. Oh, wow. How about that? How about that? That's well, nice. that's going to do it here for another episode of Faced Facts. We were nice and quick today with all our updates with everything, but we hope all of our teams continue to do well. We see a lot of success, and we march on as the seasons go on for all these teams. So for Phil, for Tom, and for uh, for me, I will see you next time here another episode of Faced Facts. See you later, guys.